Welcome back viewers. Today I want to talk to you about graphical tables. Graphical tables are a really neat visualization Spotify. It allows you to combine the detail of a table with the graphical insight and the visual insight of a visualization. Now they're a little bit tricky because they're visualizations within visualizations and I'll admit it took me a bit to really get comfortable with them and understand how they're working. So today I thought I'd share what I've learned with you and hopefully that helps you in your analysis. Let's take a look. So here we have in our COVID-19 dashboard vaccination data. Some of this just became public and we're showing vaccinations across the world at different countries and in the United States at a different state level. And I have this graphical table here, uh, which is showing me a lot of detail about the number of people vaccinated, but also the percentage of the population. We wanna get this number up as high as possible. I kind of look at that as a little bit of a meter. So let's dive into this and let's look at how this is working. So first of all, like I said, this is a visualization. These are visualizations within visualizations. Uh, so at the first level, you're gonna set up kind of the master structure and and this is just like any other visualization you have a data table uh, I have my world country table here which has all the attributes uh, for different things like cases and deaths and vaccinations I have markings I have filter schemes limiting by expression nothing special there but where it gets tricky is where you go to axes so here each of these axes are individual columns in your graphical table and you have four different types here. These are actually called miniature visualizations in the Spotfire API. And you have a spark line, calculate value, icon, and bullet graph. I'm gonna go over each of these. But before I do that, let's look at rows. So rows is determining how I'm gonna break out the individual rows of my table. So if I wanted, for instance, to look at the continent, this would, show all the data aggregated at a continent level. There's a row for each continent. Now, this is this is still useful, but what I really want to see is uh, on this table, I wanna see the country. So I have it broken out by the countries. So that's step one. Now I'm gonna go into some of the different types. So bullet graphs are probably the trickiest. And bullet graphs here, um, you can go, you can, you can change your data limiting. So I'm gonna use the data limiting from the graphical table, which is this kind of master structure, but I can use a separate data limiting if I want. I can kind of mix and match these across the different uh, axes if I want. I can change the filtering across these if I want. I can do a lot of complex things there, but I'm gonna leave this as just inheriting everything from the master level. And then I'm gonna go into the actual bullet graph. So the this calculated value, what this is, is it's actually gonna show, um, let me actually uh, take this out. Uh, let, me, let me turn out the color ranges. So this, this first value is just this bar here, and I'm doing the first shot. So this is people vaccinated per 100. That's people that received one vaccine. Now, if I wanted to compare the value, like the number of people that received two vaccines, I can maybe do the fully vaccinated people per 100. So that's this number. So you can see, let me go ahead and make this red so you can see a little bit different. So this is actually showing the uh, value that's here. Uh, this is showing the average. I need to make sure I aggregate this right. So uh, I'm gonna use max there. So now this line is actually corresponding to this, this bar as well. So I can get a comparison of how many people have had their first vaccine and how many people of the of that number have had their second vaccine. So that's an option. I, I wanted to make this more of just like a mini bar chart. So I chose not to use this at all. Now, the other aspect is, do you want one scale uh, for each bullet graph or do you want multiple scales? Here, I want all of them to go from zero to 100%. So I fixed this at 100%. If I didn't have that, you can see this bar goes all the way up to the top where the maximum value is, right? But I want this to be 100%. So I put that in 100 and you can see that right there. Now to fill in uh, the area around these bars, uh, what I've done is I've shown these color ranges. So this one, let me go ahead and actually remove this. Um, and what this does, this is this first value is gonna fill the entire area with some color, right? So that's filled the entire background. But if I wanna just use the bar itself, uh, I can add a column here. So I'm adding the same the same uh, expression that I have for the other bullet graph for the, the value that I'm showing, the primary value. And I'm showing this now, and I'm telling it that 
now I want the background to be this light gray color. So this is this first row is only going up to this value. And so if I want to make this look like a solid bar, I can just go ahead and pick a color from the screen. So now they're kind of overlapping now. It's like a nice little mini bar. Now while I'm here, I just want to make sure I let you know that you can do action controls, execute Iron Python scripts and data functions, navigate to different pages whenever things are clicked. This is useful if you want to mark some data, but also have it jump to another page that drills down on that marking. So you can do a perform action on click and then you get your whole, um, your whole action control settings right here. But I'm not doing that here. I just wanna let you know that I was there. And then tool tips. All the tool tips are usually turned on by default. I think that it can make things pretty noisy. Um, it can make, uh, you know, if you have all of these on and then you look over this, there's just, a, there can be a lot of things going on there. So I, I usually limit this to just something specific. Um, if I want it on like, if I want some detail on the bar chart, but here on my calculated values, I don't have any tool tips. I've turned them off and that really helps make things cleaner. Rem remember to refine your tool tips and all your visualizations, all your dashboards to make things clean. Now next is a calculated value and I'm gonna go to settings here and this is quite simple. It's just a simple aggregation. So whatever value I want, I'm gonna take a column. It's gonna slice that by the row that I have, the row I have uh, designated in my master structure, and I need to give it an aggregation. So I gave an aggregation of the maximum number. My data is time series. So I have data for every day, and I just want the maximum number of people vaccinated. I don't want yesterday's data, for instance. So I've used max here, and, and, and that's quite simple. Uh, make sure you go into formatting and you can clean up, you know, some of these values on these numbers as well. Uh, so here I, I like to have um, commas and to separate really large values so that you can see um, you can you can you visually can see that that value a little bit easier. Now the next thing I'm going to jump into the icons and the spark lines in a second, but that's in a different dashboard here. Before I move on, I wanted to talk about the way you select this data. So you'll notice that this header row is unselectable, but you can select this. And I think that sometimes this can be not intuitive for someone, for a consumer that's maybe not used to using Spotfire. So a little formatting tip is you can create a quick Iron Python script. So I'm gonna go to File, Document Properties, Scripts, and you can usually access different parts of the application through Iron Python that might not be in the menu. So let me get an expression. Here's a script I have that's gonna read in that graphical table and it's gonna set the header column width to zero. So I'm gonna just call this no header and I've set a viz parameter. So I'm gonna add the parameter here. There's a little trick here, viz, and it's gonna to go to my vaccination, global vaccination detail. I've selected that visualization, and I'm just gonna run this once, and you're gonna see this column disappear. So I just set that column to zero. Now what I can do is I can go into my graphical table, and in my graphical table, I can go into my axes. I'm just gonna create another calculated value here. And this value I'm just gonna use as the country region and I'm gonna use the first name. It's always gonna be unique, so that's fine. Um, it, it, it's, it's always gonna match up with that row since I have the countries split up in my master structure there. And uh, make sure you go ahead and you change a name here. You can say country here if you'd like, and that changes the name there. And I'm gonna close this and I'm just gonna move this up to the front. Now, what I have is this table is selectable at every point in the table. So that's a little bit easier for your consumer if they're not used to Spotfire. I'm gonna put that script in the video description so you can copy and paste that easily if you need it. I also wanna mention while I'm here, make sure to consider moving your, uh, your header column so that it doesn't get all jumbled up. You can move this down and this allows you to be able to better read longer text. Now next in this SPC statistical process control analysis, uh, I have a graphical table showing different alarms here. And so I also have a trend of the spark line. So this will be pretty quick. I just wanted to show you a couple tips here. So the axes 
Um, first, the spark line is a time series value. You want to set the x-axis. This is going to be the record ID in my case, and then my y-axis value. And this is showing different sensor readings off equipment. And here I'm using multiple scales because I want to look at the volatility of that sensor across just that sensor. So if I use one scale uh, for all of the spark lines, um, this one's not as easy to see in the OOC. Let me go ahead and actually use this trend spark line and I'll go to axes. I'll use one scale here. You'll see that gets pretty flat. And what that means is there's probably one of these sensors that has a big value and that's flattening out everything else out there. So I don't really want that type of distortion. I want to be able to look at some of the actual volatility per, uh, per sensor. So I've used the multiple scales there. Now next is the icons. Uh, icons are pretty simple to use, but there's a lot of different rules you can do. So you can add different rules for different thresholds for different icons you want to show. Uh, this is the calculation that's been used. Uh, so this is expression that's been used to calculate the value that will represent the icon. Uh, if I want a greater than a value, between certain values and less than a value, uh, that's all here. I can change the size of the icon. It's very neat there. I can also change the shape if I want to have Oh, these alarms, I wanna really draw attention with an X there. I can do all that. I like a nice simple look. I just wanna use some colors here. Um, I don't want too many things going on, so I've used that. But a key thing I wanna talk about with the icons is that they are segmented. So these ranges are segmented. You can go in here and you, you have all of these different rules. You can even set uh, an expression and use the uh, expression editor in Spotfire. Um, and this gives you a lot of flexibility. But the the actual I, the actual ranges here, um, you have some options like you know, I want to show the top three, the bottom three, you know, um, anything that's equal to a certain amount, greater than a certain amount. So these are these are fixed values. They're segmented. They uh, they all result in a boolean true false uh, expression to represent this rule. And why that's important is if you're trying to get this to match with other visualizations. So here I have. Um, these OOC parameters and my colors. So I have a gradient theme here. You wanna be kind of cautious of how you're doing this. You, you wanna make sure if you're using other visualizations, your colors are consistent. And so you might wanna actually use something like a segment and then add points here to make the, uh, the, make, make the segments uh, match how you have it in the rules over here. And that makes them uh, more consistent. If you don't feel like you can get that right granularity, you can of course always um, go into the rules. And here's also a shortcut. You can right click right on here and go directly to that axis properties without having to go through all those menus. Um, and then you can go to the um, rules icon and here you get, um, I, I set like a little purple in between. So you can set some more uh, segments in there. But that is a minor detail when you're styling things. Hope this video was useful for you. Make sure you subscribe if you found it helpful. And we'll be back with more tips. We'll see you next time. Thanks.